The endearing Phil Labonte. This guy likes to shit on other bands, like this one, and my respect for him majorly goes through the roof. Just kidding. Okay, not, not really, but I think it's worth noting what this guy has done for the metal community. Okay, the first thing I want to say, something we should all know about, is that, you know, when you search up his wiki page, the first genre, or the only genre that comes up is death metal. Which, you know, I, I don't know, that's, that's a little bit subjective. Well, alright, when you actually click into the wiki page, it shows a few more genres, which make a little more sense. I thought, you know, metalcore would be the one that should be advertised, but nope, it, it's death metal. So that's, that's great. So Phil is in the band All That Remains, and he's been associated with some other bands too, like Shadows Fall. He was the lead vocalist like way back in the day. And a little bit of touring for Kill Switch Engage. And oh, it, it looks like he toured with Five Finger Death Punch as the uh, replacement vocalist, which makes a lot of sense since he kind of looks like them. So in the early days, around mid-90s, Phil was in a band called Perpetual Doom, where he was the vocalist, and I guess he plays a little guitar. Yeah. I don't think this guy was a crazy shredder, but man, he could write some riffs. The riffs that he would bring to Ollie in the second All That Remains album, wow. That is, that is some genius right there. So of course this guy was sent to the military in the mid-90s, Right, right in between his perpetual doom career thing that was happening. And then after that, he went to uh, move on to a band called Shadows Fall to be the vocalist. And that's where this interesting album came about. And it's so weird to think that Phil was in this band because all I can imagine is Brian, man. The long hair and Shadows Fall, his braids, that's literally what made this band. <laughs> Everything else about the band? Like, who? who's the rest of the mans, you know? Nobody knows. So yeah, Phil was in this band for about three years, 95 to 98. And then at the end of that, he was asked to leave because there was some musical differences. So whatever that means, he was like, all right, you know, fuck it. I'm going to go start my own band. All that remains. And this supposed musical differences absolutely changed his life for the better. I mean, he could not have had something better happen to him. He got to start his own band that was successful as shit. So from here on out, you'd think it would be all glory, but not exactly. Because when All That Remains released their first album, Behind Silence and Solitude, I don't think it did very well. The songwriting for that album was an absolute mess. And there's not really any songs that like stuck in your brain and that you could recall. Like I could not name you one. But then, oh, they made a great choice here. They went to Adam D with their riffs and they're like, what the fuck do I do with these? Just a bucket full of riffs, dropped them off in front of him. And it's like, just please like turn these into songs and make sense of them. And holy shit, then they made this Darkened Heart. And I absolutely love this album. It's so good. Like, I even like it better than The Fall of Ideals. Yeah, you could say that's a hard take, but like... Have you just heard the rawness of this album? It's just... It's too good. The riffs, they're almost more memorable in a sense. Sorry, let me just side note to something really important. Phil's personal life, all I can tell you, is he's an atheist. And while we're here, I might as well let you know about how much this guy likes guns. I mean, obviously, he was in the military, so he's got to have those gun rights, you know? Oh, and what does it say here? He, uh, he likes drugs, too? Oh, oh, Phil. Come on, man. How can I help? <laughs> okay. And I found something really, really interesting here. He was uh, refrained from playing guitar in Shadows Fall. They just told him to stick to his vocals. Just be just be the vocalist, man. You could probably only play like three notes, so that's just that's just great. I mean, I would say they're 
three notes better than anybody, any other guitarist that was in that band. Like, I'm on Team Phil. I want, I want Phil to be on top, man. He deserves it, like, honestly. All right, let's have a quick look at this guy's influences. So, Phil has said that he likes uh, Justin Timberlake. Definitely makes sense. Um, Cannibal Corpse, yeah, that, that's, that's possible. Um, Pantera, for sure. And apparently he claims that he really appreciates the glam world, which I really did not expect. And there's a few other artists like Taylor Swift and Carly Rae Jepsen. Fall Out Boy and Skrillex. I mean, I know, you gotta appreciate the greats to make great. So, well, great for so long. Like, for example, this album is, uh, it's a no. It's definitely a no for me. I don't know about anybody else, but no, it's, it, it, madness cannot, cannot be madness. It, it needs to be, it, um, it needs to be like dementia. We, we need to forget about it for, for the most part. But when it comes to the rest of their discography, I think they've done decently well. Um, I really love this live one, but let, let's go through in order. So they did this one behind Silence and Solitude. Then they had this Darkened Heart and created some greatness. And then after that, just even more greatness, the fall of ideals. And then that's kind of when they start to take off a little bit and had Overcome, which pretty good album. Um, there's a lot of, it's kind of when they started evolving into butt rock a little bit, like butt metal, you know, getting a little on the cheesier side. All right. And then after that, we got four, we are many, this one, they went a little, a little heavier, like for the first half of the album. And then they just like, kind of, kind of got a little lighter sort of. And then after that, we have uh, a war you cannot win. This album you know, has, what if I was nothing great song, but. The rest of the album, eh, it's okay. It's okay. It's it still hits home though, for sure. Order of Things also an okay album. It's got Pernicious on it, which I kind of I kind of like that song. I love the solo. It's uh, really got that bebop. And um, after that, they came out with Victim of the New Disease after Ollie passed, which is super unfortunate. I like just started listening to them, and then this dude has to die. Like no, like. <laughs> Just break my heart. Victim of the New Disease is kind of a letdown, but I can see some of Ollie's songwriting. You know, that that's that's all that matters. I got to listen to the last little bit of what he had to offer. And I just naturally skipped over the, the Madness album. <laughs> Didn't even mean to. It's, that's how unimportant it is to me. It's just, it's so butt, man. This guy goes insanely bald. I mean, like, he's he's already bald, but, like, it, he's showing off that baldness. He's got no no hat on, and it is fucking madness for the, for all that remains. They, the, that is a dark time, for sure. As for Phil's little side gigs that he's done, I think it's really important to note he's actually been in an unearthed music video, the uh, Grave of Opportunity one. I had no idea about that. That's That's pretty cool. And he features in this band called Jasta. And now if you don't know Jasta, man, I'm going to do a video on him because this guy has so much to offer. <laughs> he is the biggest, I would say, biggest meme in the metal community. And there, there's nobody more meme than him. But yeah, I think Phil literally features on this song for just a couple of seconds. But still, still worth listening to. I guess he didn't really make the cut, but I'm sure he recorded more vocals. But, you know, just a little two second blip and you're fucking out of there. Or maybe that was Tim Lambozo. Oh, and the first thing on the list of what he's appeared in is Killswitch Engage's first album of the uh, self-revolution to the Sons of Man. The Alive or Just Breathing, the re-recorded versions, he was apparently featured on that. And I wonder, I wonder if it's guitar work or some sort of background vocal. I have no idea, but that's, that's cool as shit. And well, this Phil Labonte segment needs to end on a positive note. Apparently, I missed the internet when this happened, but he compared Metallica to Nickelback and everybody went crazy. So I wish I was there. <laughs> like, all right. Well, apparently this happened a couple years ago and I was just under a rock, but wow, 
<laughs> this guy's on a roll. He shits on Slipknot, uh, Nickelback, Metallica, Blackfield Brides. Literally, he keeps the metal community in check. And if you want to be just like this guy, all you have to do is like guns, um, have 20 side bitches, uh, work out, and do drugs. <laughs>